So what exactly is it about Blackbird that guitar players freak out about? What makes Blackbird so hard? Blackbird is a difficult song to play, but it shouldn't be. I mean, fundamentally, right? It's Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Very simple, simple sounding. Broken wings and learn to fly. All your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arrive. So I started really thinking about this because I was going to give a Blackbird lesson, but I figured there's no shortage of Blackbird guitar lessons on the internet, and all of them, many of them, are very, very good. So I wanted to get into a few reasons I think. Blackbird is so hard. Well, one reason is Paul McCartney is not really a guitarist. Okay, don't freak out on me now. We all know Paul McCartney is a genius and he is an amazing guitarist and piano player and of course bassist, not to mention songwriter and everything else he uh, sets out to do. But he's not a guitarist in the school sense. He's, he's a self-taught musician and a self-taught guitarist. So he doesn't have some of these predispositions that we have as guitar players, things that we learn, comfortable sh chord shapes that we learn, or right-handed finger style patterns that we learn, right? He has none of that. He didn't learn that. So you, you're left with this very stark guitar part. It's just two note chords. As guitar players, it gives us nothing to grab onto. We feel very exposed. It's almost like we're out there just with no cushion. If we were going this, we'd be fine, right? If we had a nice big full body chord under us, we would just feel so much more stable. So how do we how do we combat that. What's something we could do? Well, the first thing we really need to do is focus on getting a full round tone, right? That gives us a body of sound underneath us. So we're playing it with more authority. Take it slow, focus on your tone. If you notice when Paul McCartney plays, it has a wonderful vibrato. Slow it down, make it very legato or long. Focus on that tone. And when you have that full tone ringing, singing out of the guitar, that will help give you a little more security in playing Blackbird. Another reason I think Blackbird gets in our heads is there's so much fear of whether or not we're playing it wrong. There's this famous story going around the internet of how Paul McCartney went on stage and asked the audience if there were any guitar players out there and if they played Blackbird. And then he said, you're all playing it wrong. And it was a joke, of course. But I myself have been at gigs and have played Blackbird and have had people come up to me and tell me I'm playing it wrong. What does that exactly mean? So technically, if you're not playing it exactly the way Paul McCartney plays it, I guess, on the record or live or in any said situation then you're playing it wrong because by default whatever Paul McCartney did that's right and anything else is wrong by that definition but when you're playing a, a song for people the only right way is the way that gets them to feel the groove and like the song I was playing it with two fingers which I still tend to do and pivoting Notice my right hand. I'm using 
my second finger to pivot. And then I'm using my first finger for that little Paul McCartney-esque kind of strum. Whereas Paul, I believe, is just using two fingers. But I like, I like, I like grabbing it like that. Sonically, there really is no difference. And you're free to play it really however you want. Getting to the pivot, that's the other thing. I'm almost certain that there is no pivot. And when I say pivot, I mean that little that in-between note. That there is, but it's not like that. It's But if you're playing it alone, that pivot kind of gives the song a little groove. Is that wrong? Well, like if it's not on the record, then technically it's wrong, but I like to play it wrong. This point is kind of related to my point about it, how it is on the record. And if you notice on the record, you have this constant tick, tick, tick. I'm gonna play a little bit of it here. I, hopefully I don't get thrown off of the internet. Now you have this. That gives the record this constant... <laughs> you don't have that when you play it alone. You're just out there floating around in the universe. Again, feeling of being exposed. Guitarists tend to... We, we want to be doing something at all times. Whether it's twiddling our fingers or strumming, we feel the need to be busy. And if not, then the, then the anxiety, um, the anxiety comes into play. So one way to combat that is that little pivot, right? There's so much focus on the right hand, right? What about the left hand? If there's tension in the left hand, well, tension is going to share throughout our whole body. If there's tension anywhere because of fear or anxiety or not being confident that we know the thing yet or that we're going to end up at the right fret at the right time, then it will it'll move itself into other areas of our body and it'll tend to make us screw up somewhere else. So, on the left hand side, always keep that left hand relaxed. Keep our thumb properly positioned. Let's not, let's not grab the neck. Let's not resort to any bad habits. And let's not keep our hands too locked down onto the fretboard because we're going to get that uh, very un, unattractive squeak, squeak, squeak sound. You know, some squeak is part of playing guitar, but... We don't want too much of that as we squeak around the neck. So I think one of the reasons Blackbird is so difficult is it doesn't stay in one position ever. It's constantly moving. It doesn't stop. So if we're out, let's say we're singing it, we have to we are singing it on a microphone, we're singing and playing. Now we have to we have to be aware of where our hands are and keep ourselves positioned on the microphone to sing it. So let's try to play it with our eyes closed. Let's see how we do it. Oh, damn, I can't believe that. Huh? Practice it like that. Rely on the force, Luke. Hmm, that's an interesting exercise. Put a bag over your head. Get used to, get used to try to just for practice sake. This way when you're at a gig, yeah, quick little glance down, no freaking out. You know where it, you know where it lives. You've got it under your belt. Okay, getting back to this unyielding groove is what I tend to call it, this constant relentless. 
truly in most records in most songs you do there is a fundamental underlying groove obviously that's what attracts us to music even more so than the tonality of it or the the, the notes themselves is the the feel right i mean we started beating on drums and in the jungles that's what music is right essentially at its core so like anything practice it with a metronome I like this pulse metronome. And what's great about the metronome is it will quickly and without any shame point out our weaknesses. So I have it on 92 right now. And do it at different tempos. Don't get locked in in one tempo. that space. Learn to like this space. Don't be afraid of empty space. If you practice with a metronome, let's slow it down. Let's make it uncomfortable. Mm, let's see how this feels. you to uh, mm, mm, focus on the feel. Mm, mm. It's funny, right? It's at the table. This guy is whole up. But that is really where it's at. It's that guitarist, we focus on all the technicals. And you need to, because you need to have the technical stuff under your belt to be able to play anything. But when it comes down to it, it's when we finally let go of that technical stuff and hone in the technique, bring it in to just simply make music out of it is what it's all about. And I hope this little Blackbird discussion, if you will, helped you in perhaps your struggle to play Blackbird or um, maybe you're playing Blackbird a long time. I even sit down sometimes and rethink this song because I'm like ah, it didn't feel right. It's not. It's not really easy. It's simplicity is what makes it, what makes it so difficult. Anyway, I'm Frank Persico. Please like and subscribe if you got to the end of this video and I didn't scare you off. And um, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great one.